Hello, everyone, everyone and welcome to the program. I'm Sean Joaquin Baloye in Lagos. It is 180 days to the general elections of 2019. The presidential race in any clan comes with high competitiveness because the president stands for the highest values and ideals of the country. Those who vie for the position are presumably aware of heavy workload, the tough decision-making and overseeing a lot of duties, which is why the question about leadership profile often comes up. In Nigeria, we are in that political season where many are showing interest in running the nation. With 91 political parties, the communists may reveal more presidential aspirants. For now, let's focus on those who have signified interest. One of them is... Uh, Tokwe Fasua, a businessman, economist, and a writer. He founded the abound, Abundant Nigeria Renewal Party, ANRP. He joins me from our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, Mr. Fasua, for your time on the program tonight. Let's begin uh, with uh, perhaps a quick reaction to uh, the, when the president came back from uh, uh, his UK vacation, and he did say that he will jail more uh, thieves who have brought uh, the economy of the nation to a standstill. What is your immediate reaction from your party and yourself? Well, um, well it, 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 uh, what I'm going to say uh, is going to be my opinion. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for uh, this privilege of inviting me uh, here once more. Uh, so my, my party usually, uh, we deliberate before we uh, put out an opinion on uh, some of these issues. I don't think we're going to respond to this, though. But um, my own personal opinion when I saw that was, uh, I thought it was a bit, um, uh, a bit petty if it wasn't tragic. You know, uh, I, I also felt the president was perhaps uh, quoted out of context. I, I don't see why uh, someone will be gone on vacation for about 10 days plus and then comes back to tell you how he's going to jail people. Again, that's um, a hack back to something that we've always uh, complained about uh, regarding the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the style of leadership and uh, vision of the president. Um, the, 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 the kind of um, uh, intense focus on maybe I want to jail people, I want to, uh, you know, it's all about corruption. Sometimes it goes abroad to say how Nigerians are so corrupt. And there's this kind of singularity of mind um, uh, that kind of uh, reveals that uh, we can't do better than uh, perhaps chase corruption and jail people. But again, and you look at it very closely, it's not as if many people have been jailed. The two famous people that are in jail right now, Jolly Yame and um, uh, the other gentleman, uh, 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 Darie from uh, Plateau State, the case was on for about 11, 11 years, each of them. Yes, granted that maybe the other government did not even want to uh, uh, diligently prosecute some of those cases. Uh, but, I mean, are we saying that those are the two people that should be in jail in this country? I think that we could do a lot better than that, even if all we're doing was pursuing corruption. But I, I felt that um, it wasn't a smart statement for the leader of a country to come back and start talking about he's going to jail people. Uh, and that's the reason why some of us are stepping forward, to say uh, leadership could be done a lot better than this. Um, fine, if you want to jail people, I mean, that, that's the job for, for the judiciary and for the, um, for the EFCC and these other a agencies. Let them do their jobs the way they should, the way they are they're set up to do. Let everybody stick to their mandate. Uh, but there's a lot more positive that we can bring out of the economy, uh, that the economy can grow. Just today we heard that the, uh, from the, uh, the, the DG of the Bureau for Statistics that this second quarter, the economy dipped. Uh, that because of, uh, uh, you know, some of these conflicts around the country, the economy, uh, the growth that we expected, we couldn't attain. He hasn't revealed the figure, but it's as if the economy has dipped again. But you ask him, uh, uh, Dr. Khaled, you know, so... We, we, we are coming in, some of us who are stepping up, to say this is an economy that should be going, growing by 15% to 20%. And why is this so? When we say this thing, when I say this thing, Mr. it seems like, oh, it's uh, so out moment, of the world. But so, the Mr. Fasua, I, I, I like to come in here for a moment. I like yeah. a lot of Nigerians who are perhaps who did not hear the president when he came back and who are not privy to that statement he made. I would like to, them to get the privilege of hearing him uh, once again on his intention of jailing more thieves. Take a listen to him. We are going to jail more of the thieves, you know, that brought the economic problem to the country. 
I think this is being expected of me and I will do it. Uh, let people uh, choose what party they want to belong to, but let them make sure that uh, they have uh, empowered their constituencies by educating them, voter registration, and making sure they have got their permanent voters cards and that they use their right as Nigerians to vote whoever they like. So, Mr. Faswa, you heard him there. So, the question is, the president did say in 2015 that a major part of his ambition and agenda in running this government is to fight corruption. And he's coming back with a reassurance that he's going to do so. Uh, you have a problem with that? No, well, I, I have no problem with him chasing corruption. I mean, I mean, we have about less than six months uh, to the next election. It, it makes 180 days. Uh, this government uh, has a tenure up to May next year, uh, at, at most, you know, except they form a new government, which we're hoping they don't. Uh, but, you know, they've got all this time to pursue this jailing and all of that. But again, we cannot have a scenario where you are just focused on jailing people and you're making it to a song and dance. I, I think it's a political statement. I think he's making that statement to those guys who are daring him, actually. If you ask me, you know, if we want to really analyze this, uh, those people who have stepped up to him, like the Senate president and all of that. Well, hey, if you're going to jail anyone, you know, first of all, it has to pass through a certain process. If you cannot tighten up that process and clean up that process, uh, there's no point you coming to tell us that you're going to... However, again, I'm going to repeat, this is the father of the nation. It's like your, your father traveling abroad or somewhere and then coming back home and, and the first statement he's making is that, look, he's going to beat people today. Uh, you know, I mean, that's not the kind of thing that endears people. So that's why I'm saying that um, I'm still hoping that he said a lot more things, but maybe uh, the most sensational part of what he said is, uh, is what was speak. Because again, he's my president uh, for now, and you know, when, when this kind of things happen, for me it's a faux pas. It's a faux pas, it's a misstatement. And these kind of things actually make you want to, it's a cringeworthy moment. We shouldn't be talking about a, a, a father of a nation who goes abroad, comes back and says he's going to jail. But hey, again, I'm repeating, there's so much to do in this economy. This economy needs to grow. We need to take 50 to 70 million people out of poverty. All the recoveries that have been done by the um, uh, EFCC and all these other agencies, most of that money has not been accounted for. So the money has not actually made it to the people that re require this money uh, to take people out of poverty. As I'm speaking, Nigeria is still the poorest country in the world. We have almost 90 million people in uh, abject poverty and extreme poverty. And those are the kind of, why is he not coming back to say, I'm going to take... 20 million people out of poverty before I leave. That's a great thing to say. You should actually focus more on the positive aspect and let all of these agencies to do their work. However, if he's not going to do that, we are here, I am here to do it on his behalf. Because what I'm promising, 15 to 20% growth, 50 to 70 million people out of poverty within uh, three, four years of my governance of this country, and a lot of positive things happening in this economy. We're going to be turning things around, re-energizing the educational sector to be solution providers. Uh, you know, even, even, even all of this electricity sector stuff is going to be fixed by our students and lecturers in the universities and polytechnics across the country. So, hey, we are bringing in positive vision for right. this country.